In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. My dear friend, I am sure you are very well. It is Sunday, the 19th day of November, and today we celebrate the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today it is the last of the Ordinary Sundays. Coming Sunday will be Christ the King Sunday. And then the Sunday after will be the first Sunday of Advent. We thank God. Our first reading today is taken from the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verses 10 to 13, then 19 to 20. Our gospel passage is taken from um, our Psalms. Our responsorial Psalm is taken from Psalms 127 verses 1 to 5. Our second reading is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 1 to 6. And our gospel passage is taken from Matthew 25 verses 14 to 30. As we come closer to the end of this liturgical year A, as I have said, the church encourages us to remain faithful and dedicated to Christ our head. As good servants, we must be devoted to him. Also, we must be ready to render full account of our talents to him. Our first reading for this Sunday is from Proverbs. The virtuous woman of Proverbs radiates as a bright star. The term virtuous simply refers to strength, efficiency, or ability. Here it refers to both spiritual and moral strength, as well as to the firmness of character. You may want to read Ruth chapter 3 verse number 11. So she is virtuous because of the strength of her character and devotion. The virtuous woman is good, is faithful, and knows what to do to keep her family together. In addition, she holds out her head, she holds out her hand to the needy. Today, the virtuous woman is the symbol of the Holy Mother Church, who prepares us adequately to meet Christ our head. She prepares us through her constant teachings and charitable works. Hence, this is call for us to emulate the qualities of the virtuous woman. We are to be as faithful and devoted as she is to our calling and to God's mission. In the second reading, Paul presents to us a description of the conduct expected from a child of the light. He reminds us of the inevitable, the Lord's day. According to him, one of the most significant characteristics of this day is that it would be sudden. It is when people are saying, how quiet and peaceful it is, the worst suddenly happens. That how quiet and peaceful it is that the worst suddenly happens. In, no, in other words, Paul is simply encouraging us to be vigilant and active in our preparation for the day of the Lord. 
always being vigilant as we wait for the day of the Lord. It is also more about waiting and what we are doing about waiting. And today's gospel sounds a caution. It gives us a note of caution. We must be ready. Entry into God's kingdom should not be taken for granted, but we should be up and doing, not burying our treasure in the field. The Christian way is about dedication to duty and work. It might be, it might be prudent to bury the talent in order to ensure it is not lost. But Christianity is not about being careful or being complacent or being lazy. It is about using our gifts. It is about showing love. It is about showing, being charitable to others. In a real sense, Jesus is telling us not to be afraid to take a risk, to use our imagination, to take initiatives, to challenge our world and its attitude and values. The talent we have received above all is the word of God and every one of us is charged with the responsibility to spread that word, the good news. So, we have to be up and at it, using our talents for the good of the community. We have to get on with living, living in the light of Christ. While some might think it best to sit around and wait for the Lord's coming, that is not what Paul advises the Thessalonians. There is not much point in waiting because we do not know when coming will happen. Much better, therefore, to be wide awake and sober and preparing. So that means waiting is equal to working. The second coming will mark a new Easter night of eternity. Believers will find the fulfillment of all their baptism, of what their baptism means, that is, meeting Christ. They will pass from sleep to wakefulness and from darkness to light. That is worth being ready for. So then that tells us that uh, it is not time to sit. It is time to remain awake and work. There are those who may think that uh, waiting means sitting, being inactive and waiting for something. Now let me give you an analogy, uh, which I'm sure would be very close home. When you go to a hotel... There are young men and women largely who serve you in the hotels. Uh, have you ever thought about what they are called? They are called waiters. And someone may say, oh, they are called waiters because they wait for us. <laughs> if there are people who exemplifies what waiting means are the waiters in the hotel. While we are seated eating, all of them are very, very busy, as busy as bees. Oh, that tells you. Uh huh. Now, if you wanted to spiritualize that and understand what waiting means in the Bible, it means that waiting means working. Waiting means bringing transformation. Waiting means doing something, not just sitting down. We are called as agents of transformation. We are called to make sure that we allow Jesus to be known 
to be experienced and to be touched by the community. So, if we will be fulfilled, if we will be happy for what we are doing, our fulfillment, our happiness only comes after doing what we are called to do, the dedication to work and duty, loving what you do. Because if you love what you do, what you do will love you. Did you hear that? If you love what you do, what you do will love you. If you love your work, your work will love you. If you love your apostolate, your apostolate will love you. If you love your business, your business will love you. Those of you who tend to animals, you ha you'll have noted that if you show animals love, they reciprocate almost all of them. In fact, animals have instinct who loves them and who does not largely, largely. They may not do that all of them, but I still feel because I have some knowledge of animals and how they respond to human treatment, but largely animals will know who loves them and who does not. So you love your work, you love your work, your work will love you. Our way is the way of Christ. And the way of Christ is the way of dedication to duty and work. Thank you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do have a In productive the name of the Son. Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear Fred, I'm sure you are very well. It is Sunday, the 19th day of November in the year of our Lord and Savior 2023. Let us pray. Beloved God, thank you for being so merciful to me. Thank you for taking care of me, for giving your son so that I might have eternal life. My Lord, I am grateful for your love for your kindness, for your faithfulness, for all that you have given me. I also ask for your help not to be a procrastinator. Sometimes it seems so easy to fall into the temptation of procrastinating. We put obstacles, absurd goals, or we simply think we are worthy of a little too much rest that ends up causing a bad feeling upfront. Help me, Father, to know the right time for each thing. Lead me in your way that everything I do, I do with dedication I would do for you. I want to be a more regular person with my schedules and that I don't leave anything for later, but that I do each thing in its own time. Take out of my life everything that has been holding me back from doing what I need to do. I pray that my attention will not be easily distracted that I will focus on what I need to complete and come to do everything according to your will, but that at the right time I will also know how to rest to renew my strength for your work. My God, yours is the power, the glory, and the honor forever. It is in the name of Jesus that I pray. I give thanks and ask that my words may reach the Lord like a sweet perfume. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. 
Amen. My dear friend, I remain your priest and servant, Father C.K., wishing you a productive day.